I've been thinking lately, what is the greatest automotive dark horse of late? You know, something that's really surprised us. Because it's not from Ferrari, because they predictably make very fast performance cars. And it's not from Ford, because they make some very sensible family cars, as we all expect. Now, I think it might be this, the Kia Stinger GTS, a high performance luxury saloon from a car manufacturer that people used to make jokes about a decade ago. Welcome to the new Kia Stinger, a car designed to take on the likes of BMW, Audi and Mercedes and a very left field choice for the South Korean manufacturer of, well, well-built, well-priced family cars. But it serves a purpose. This is a halo model, a car that gets people asking questions about the brand. It's not so much about sales, the Stinger, it's about brand awareness. And it's doing its job. I've only had this car for the past week and I have to say the number of people who've come up to me and gone, oh my God, Kia do more than SUVs and city cars? And it gets people talking. I've even had people in a Mercedes C-Class come up to me the other day and have a good look around it and say that they were potentially thinking about a move from the three-pointed star to a Kia. Unheard of 10 years ago, right? Anyway, on to the specifics of the car and isn't it a looker, goodness me. It's long bonnet, sloping roof line, short rear overhang, it's just pure sporting GT in the way that the design language has communicated itself over what's quite a lengthy wheelbase. It's sculptural, it's tall, it's athletic, it's a really good looking thing. Okay, some things like the bonnet vents are just there for display, but the gills on the side are genuinely there to release high pressure from under the wheel arches. They have a function. Something else that certainly serves a purpose is what you'll find under the bonnet. Now you can have the Stinger with a fairly conventional petrol or diesel engine, or in this GTS model, a 3.3 litre twin turbocharged V6. And that will do very nicely. Producing 361 brake horsepower and 510 newton meters of torque, this rear wheel drive Stinger will get itself from zero to 60 miles per hour in just 4.7 seconds and hurtle on to a top speed of 168 miles per hour. Such figures clearly prove that the Kia has the performance credentials to back up those good looks. In addition to all that go faster under the bonnet, you'll find that it has big Brembo brakes to slow it all down again, and adaptive suspension that's been tuned by Albert Biermann of BMW M Division fame. The car's demeanor is governed by this drive mode selector down here, and it ranges from eco, as you might expect to eke out a few more MPG, all the way up to Sport Plus, which will turn the traction control off. And that is where the fun very much is. Even in sport, if you want to play it safe, you can still feel under acceleration this car straining against its electronic shackles as that rear end is still willing to wriggle. There's still a little bit of play, even with the electronic nannies turned on. With them turned off, sideways, as long as you like. And because of the long wheelbase, it's very easy to modulate and control the slide, thanks to the amount of time and awareness given to the driver. Speaking of driver communication, there's actually a surprising amount of it. You can feel it through the wheel, that not only is the steering well weighted and precise so you can place the car where you want, but you actually do get a feel for the grip beneath you, and that's a rare thing in a car these days. And again, the throttle pedal mid-corner is very much something you can use to adjust the attitude of the car as you progress. It really is quite an enthralling thing to drive quickly, with the only real disappointment being that, you know, maybe the exhaust note isn't all that great, it has the performance to justify something a bit throatier, but then on the flip side of that, whenever you are settling down, it's not intrusive in the slightest. The torque from this V6 engine comes in really low, so the surge of acceleration is mighty quick. And whilst it might give away a little bit in the 0-60 run to something like an Audi A5 Sportback with its all-wheel drive, I think this rear-wheel drive setup is infinitely more fun than what you'd find in the Audi. Sport mode also tightens up the suspension and you get much less body roll than what you might expect in a car of this size. It really is an easy and predictable thing to thread through a series of bends. It's a well executed chassis, full stop. Now power gets to those rear wheels via an eight speed automatic transmission and 
clumping around town, it's actually perfectly fine. It finds its gears okay, blurs the changes together quite nicely. Whenever you pick up the pace, it can get a bit choppy, it can get a bit lumpy, at which point I'd say go to the paddles because it's perfectly responsive on the paddles and to be honest with you, this is a driver's car. But whenever you're done teaching BMW fans that you don't need a rounder on the nose of your car to have some fun, you can turn it all down into comfort or eco and it's a brilliant cruiser. I mean on the motorway it's quite quiet, there's a bit of road noise from the tyres and the large alloy wheels, but it rides really well and certainly at speed that ride has a certain fluidity to it, it's really nice. You soften up the dampers, soaks up the lumps and bumps quite nicely. Low speeds, okay, there is some thuds into the cabin, but generally speaking, it's a comfortable thing to be in. The GTS model gets these beautiful Nappa leather sport seats that are not only supportive through the corners when you're driving exuberantly, but offer enough lower back support to be comfortable on long journeys too. The 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is also really ergonomic and easy to use. And I do love the design of the dashboard, it's actually quite Mercedes-Benz-esque. However, when you do start to prod and play further down in the cabin, you will find some scratchy plastics and some materials that aren't befitting of a vehicle of this price. The rear bench offers seating for three, with the outermost passengers receiving actually quite generous legroom and pretty good headroom considering that the roof slopes down at the back. The middle passenger, however, is more of an occasional seat. There is a large transmission hump there that you have to overcome if you sit in the middle. Open up the electric tailgate and you'll find 406 litres of space back there, which might not be class leading, but it's perfectly good for family life and it's actually a really quite sizeable boot with a nice wide opening for loading bulky items. Officially speaking, they say 27.7 mpg in terms of fuel economy. I have to say this past week I've been doing a little better than that, skirting around 30 mpg in mixed conditions. Now like all Kias, this comes with the 7 year 100,000 mile warranty, which is just unheard of in this class. It's a, an exceptional amount of cover for a vehicle of this calibre. You won't find that with BMW, Audi, or Mercedes and that seven year warranty will transfer to the second, third owner who may own this car over seven years. The Kia Stinger is an exciting new addition to a segment that has become somewhat predictable over the years. At £40,000 it rivals its competitors in price point, performance and technology. I think badge snobbery may play a bit of an issue. People who want to spend the same amount of money on something with a three pointed star on its nose for example but I have to say, the Kia is certainly worth considering. Certainly one of the most characterful vehicles in its class. 